Hello, I'm Andrew Hara, the host of The Bomb Squad. I wanted to tell you about my movies. All are available on Tubi, which is a free streaming service. The last ones is a zombie drama about how a pandemic and isolation could drive a group of people mad. When the virus hits, John finds himself alone and scared until he meets Michael, his protector. But when Karina, another survivor, enters the mix, everything that John and Michael knew will be turned on its head. The last one is a zombie virus movie that's somehow even more relevant today. Plus, it has zombies. Check it out. Borderland is a mexploitation film about living in El Paso. When Sarah finds herself in debt to the cartels, she has until sunrise to find some missing monies with the help of her executioner. Borderland is a true midnight movie and a lot of fun. Finally, the documentary Humble Spirits tells the story of the Han family, including champion Jennifer Han from El Paso, Texas. The entire Han family has grown up in the combat sports and has helped shape who they are both in and out of the ring. Humble Spirits, a family of fighters, is the perfect documentary for boxing fans of all ages. Check out Tubi to watch all my films. And now, let's start the show. Welcome to the Bomb Squad Quickie Edition. <laughs> Don't say, Don't say Quickie Edition. Just kidding, guys. I definitely have a lot to talk about. If you haven't seen my short film, Do You Even Scream? It's no longer the commercial at the beginning of this, but you should go check it out. It's on my film page, which is hotafilms.com. It's super cool. Um, go check it out. Go watch the other shorts. Like, subscribe. Um, tell your friends. Knock, break into your neighbor's house. Log on to their computer. Uh, start playing all my shorts. Start playing my movies on Tubi murder anyone who gets in your way um you know just mr beast type <laughs> and what i'm what, what i'm looking for i'll i'll cl- i'll cure your blindness but you'll have to do something for me um so yeah welcome to the bomb squad guys william is not here today he's had some kind of uh important things and he cannot be here he might not be here for a little while because of those important things which we won't get into because they're private and we don't share information privately um, but anyway, so today it's a very special day. If you've looked at your calendar, you're like, hey, it's April 5th. What movie came out today that I want to watch? And the answer is Super Mario Brothers. And so you're also asking yourself, hey, can I watch a weirder version of this movie? And the answer is yes. <laughs> we're going to take you through it. So today we're talking about 1993's Super Mario Brothers starring Bob Hoskins, starring Dennis Ha, huh? starring... Uh, Academy Award winner Bob Hoskins, starring Academy Award winner Dennis Hopper, and starring American Dad Joke recipient John Leguizamo. Um, <laughs> it was from 1993. It was directed by uh, two madmen. It was, directed it was, by it, it, it was a it was a married couple who yeah. directed it. Who Annabelle Jenkel and Rocky Morton, who, who hated each other and the cast and crew. Apparently, yeah, they did <laughs> so... not like each other. And, yeah. Uh, and also, I have some star. Okay, so I'm, I'm a real big John Leguizamo fan. As a fan of all Latinos, including myself. Um, and one of one time he like came to talk in our town, and he was supposed to do like a stand up special because he started as a comedian. And then he like his acting coach died like that morning, and so he was like, you know, I, I'm supposed to do stand up, but instead I'm just going to talk about my acting career. And like he. Um, he, it, it was all improvised. He didn't know what he was going to say. And so he started talking about like every movie and like he talked about how much of a dick Steven Seagal is and like how he like signed on to this movie, uh, the movie they did together, which was uh, Executive Decision. And he was like, he signed up specifically because he's supposed to die in the first act and it's supposed to be like this big twist. And then um, he gets there on set. And he's like, oh, I don't want to die anymore. And, uh, and so... They had to like trick him into thinking that he was going to survive and then like, um, and then have the scene and they're like, oh yeah, you'll live. And then they killed him because he didn't, it's not just that he wanted to survive. He was like, I can't die. It said he wanted to survive. And then he also wanted to be paid the amount he would have been paid for if he starred in the movie. And the whole reason that they didn't have him be the main character is because he wanted Steven Seagal money and they didn't have it. But it's also a funny movie because... 
That movie stars Kurt Russell, and he's supposed to be like, oh, uh, excuse me, guys, I'm just a nerd, and I don't know how to solve this murder hijacking thing. And it's like, uh, you're a thousand times more buff. <laughs> right you've worked out so much yeah that's funny though that like because that's how they did um robert rodriguez did that in planet terror where there's a virgin where his son like lives through the whole movie and it's like oh yeah they had to trick a child and then steven seagal in the same way steven seagal and a child very similar mindset if that it's, helps okay. it's like the poochie frame yeah. i have to go now my planet and- needs me yeah. What he said about Super Mario Brothers is they they kind of like they were changing the script all the time, and so they just stopped reading the script, and then they also like and then Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo just started getting drunk like all the time, and so if you pay attention to the van, it has a bunch of dents. Those dents are not supposed to be in that movie. <laughs> Those dents are because they kept crashing the fucking van from the movie, and so like yeah, it's just a very interesting. It can like if you ever get a chance to um to like listen to like a B actor or even like a, an A actor who's just done a lot of credits like Bruce Campbell, John Leguizamo, uh, there's a bunch of them. Like they always have the best stories because they've been everywhere and they've never had like the the pressure of having to like carry a movie, you know. So they're just like it's a bunch of fun stuff. But yeah, that was my exclusive. Uh, mario brothers lore and also oh here's another lore that's funny it's like michael keaton and like tom hanks and tom cruise were originally like supposed to be mario and it's like what what kind of budget did you guys think you had <laughs> you're not really like it, like apparently too i was just kind of like reading up on it. it's like they knew within like the first day or two of shooting like everyone's like oh this is nothing like this is just nothing this is a mess um and you can see the rewrites like all over this movie. Um, well, and not only that, but they gave they offered King Koopa, played by Dennis Hopper, to Kevin Costner, Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> and Sylvester Stallone, just to like let you know what they thought, like who they thought was going to be going out for this movie. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, and so, Josh, tell us what this movie is about. Well, if you've ever played the game Super Mario, forget everything you know about it. But if you've seen the movie we recently watched, Strange Days, it's weirdly like that, and it shouldn't be. It's like a dystopian L.A. <laughs> like type setting, even though there's really no reason for it to be. Um, okay, so I'm going to disagree with you on this. <laughs> So this movie is about two plumbers and they find a secret world and they're trying to save, uh, it's not technically his girlfriend. It's, um, it's, uh, it's like a girl he knows and they kind of have some romantic interest. That's a girl he met like the day before. She's an orphan who was hatched from an egg and the nuns had to have been Catholic nuns because they took this egg person and they didn't ask any questions. They weren't like, why are you in an egg? Are you a monster? Are they should, they weren't scared in any way. They just took it and they're like, come on, Daisy. (laughs) Um, and so they like, they go, they try to save David and they find themselves in this alternate dimension. Um, and so here's the thing. When we reviewed Wolverine origins of Wolverine, Josh was like, Oh, I really, um, like this. Oh no, no. It was when we reviewed masters of the universe. John, Josh said, this movie feels like another script that they just added He-Man and Skeletor to that movie. And Super Mario Brothers is like the complete opposite of that. Whoever wrote this movie knew all the lore. Like, <laughs> but they didn't use it. <laughs> technically, everything in this movie is correct. It's just... Yeah. How it's like, it kind of feels like uh, this is like... The punishment. Like, I feel like this movie should come out now. And it should be a punishment for all the canon. Like, oh, it's not canon. Oh, in the comic book. But, like, like, yeah, it's... No, no, you're right. But in the sense of, like, someone knew the lore but hated it. (laughs) See, I don't even think it is. I think it's, like, David Lynchian. And I'm very sad that William's not here because I really wanted to see his reaction when I said this movie's David Lynchian. Where it's, like, it's it's an idea taken to its most extreme. 
because it's yeah, I like, guess that is true. The, like the dinosaur like, uh, stuff. Yeah, it's like okay, it has dinosaurs. They're like, oh, the Super Mario Brothers. They love like, what do you know about Mario? Queen Koopa is technically a big dinosaur. They're Plumber Brothers. They have to save a princess. There's like bombs and stuff. They have to like get through a bunch of like different deserts and terrains. They're they're usually helped every once in a while by fungus hanging from the roof and the walls. <laughs> but they shoot fireballs and they see, jump really high. All of that stuff is in like, this movie. Like if you okay, yeah, like there's like a Yoshi and he's kind of helpful. Like you know, there's like the elements are there, but like if you saw any any ten minutes of this movie and you didn't hear the names Mario or Luigi, you would you would be like, oh, this is like a '90s comic book dystopia movie, you know? Yeah. Like they have to like I don't know. It's weirdly like sexual. Like they have to infiltrate like it's a club so and horny. yeah, like fight like a BDSM like dominatrix. Uh, <laughs> that's that's a big Bertha from the games, by the way. Again, <laughs> it's like that thing where it's like imagine if you're explaining this. To a kid. Well, and in the game's like, Big Birth is a big cannon, not yeah, a, exactly. a large woman. <laughs> and you're like, um, you're like, okay, you're like a kid, right? And you're looking at this movie, and the the dad comes in, he's like, oh, is, is this Mario? I don't even see Luigi. And you're like, no, he's here. It's like, oh, but does it even have Yoshi? And you're like, yeah, it does. And they're like, oh, does it? Well, it doesn't have Goombas. How could it have Goombas? And they're like, no, they're here as well. They even have like Spike and the other lesser bosses that you have to fight that are just smaller versions of King Koopa. <laughs> and they're there <laughs> as smaller versions of King Koopa. But like, if you just saw a picture of him, you wouldn't be like, that's Spike. But in the movie, you're like, oh yeah, in this world, that is what Spike Like is. in content, they have Toad, but he's like a rockabilly protest <laughs> musician. <laughs> and he has like a mushroom kind of hairstyle, like nothing. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's such a funny and like okay and here's the thing i will agree on two points it's super horny for no real reason and the other thing is is this even a kids movie like there's no jokes in this well, movie and that's what like it's okay and then apparently the original script was much more like oh this is like an adult satire and it's like how are you making a satire of video games when this is the first video game movie ever made? I know. <laughs> so, and why, why are you jumping out of the bat with satire, guys? You don't like, start with Watchmen and then do yeah. Batman, you know? But, but like, but yeah, then the studio's like, no, make it kid-friendly. But they just change some of it. So it's like, okay, well, there's boing sound effects when they hit stuff. But he's still super horny and, like, fights BDSM guys. <laughs> well, and it's like, um, yeah, and, and apparently, like, they brought in, like, eight screenwriters at different times <laughs> and they didn't tell any of them what the other one was doing just yeah but yeah and it's like yeah because like some people like they were brought in to make it darker some people were brought in to make it lighter sometimes they were both doing this at the same time you know it's just kind of like and just, like yeah go ahead no, even, even like the brooklyn stuff like they're like rival plumbing company scapelli's is like clearly like a mobbed up like corrupt it even, union. Has, it even has the <laughs> hammer brothers and like the, the scapelli brothers are the hammer brothers from the game but then it's like they're there but they're a rival with mario and luigi and it's like wait but are they goomba like are they from the dinosaur <laughs> and then they like break they break something so that the the portal to the the bowser world's open and it's like so did they know that that was going to happen? And like, why are they dressed exactly like the game and nobody else is? Like, they're at the for most of this movie, Mario is wearing green and Luigi is wearing red. And it's like, why did you make this? Like, I understand the then, choice of like, Mario was wearing blue and Luigi was wearing purple. But why are they wearing the opposite of the colors? Well, they, they're like halfway through, they when they have to infiltrate the nightclub... They're, they dress in women's suits, which is, again, another weird, like, okay, here's a weird detail. But then, like, See, Luigi's but that's wearing again. That's pink. again, Josh. Josh doesn't understand. He's not a real gamer like me. They're not wearing women's suits. It took me until this time to watch it. They've gone into the underground tunnel, Josh. So do you know what they're doing in that scene? They're wearing their fire outfits. <laughs> no, no, no. That, the, um... 
the suits they wear to to like get into the club that like uh, yeah because those bright suits are exactly what the fire colors are when they get the flyer plant or, or but the 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 two guys helping them are like oh that's my ex wife's clothes you're wearing yeah so it's like in the canon they're wearing well, women's suits yeah but, it, but but that's what I'm saying like again in the canon they're wearing women's <laughs> suits but also in the canon they're wearing their fire outfits from the game and it's like um. <laughs> Why? Why are you doing this? Yeah, it's now. I will say though, you know, we we've talked a lot of trash. The the practical like I don't think dyna- we've talked trash. It's too confusing to talk. It's trash it's, about it's the- yeah. It's more like you're just trying to explain what this is. <laughs> uh, the the fact okay. So they're Brooklyn plumbers. Luigi meets this girl he likes her. Mario has a girlfriend too named Daniela. That's you know women are getting kidnapped all over the city. Um, and you know you don't know why, but they fall through this dimensional yeah. portal. Ant Man Quantumania style, um, right? Like the hit movie Ant Man Quantumania. <laughs> uh, it made as much money, no? But they they get to this dinosaur city. I don't know if they ever call it anything, but I've been calling it Dino City in my notes. Pretty good set, like this weird, like fungus covered, like L.A. grunge, like retro, like kind of. 80 cyberpunk future it's nothing like mario but it looks cool you know that i i do yeah. enjoy kind of the practical effects of it all you know oh yeah the practical like and bomba looks good uh they have like they they meet the little bomb yoshi looks pretty good for a real life yoshi i mean he looks like a horrifying monster <laughs> right. if you think about it everyone in the world would look like a horrifying monster <laughs> the goombas look also like horrifying monsters but they're at least unique the Goombas are probably the furthest away from, like... Because in this game... Like, in the game, they're just big mushrooms. But in this, they have little heads. and they have They're like mushroom bodies. heads. Yeah. But it's almost like a commentary on, like, fascism. To be like, oh, the troops are strong but weak-willed. And it's like... Why in the Mario movie are you making this point? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I also do, like... Um, uh, Koopa, King Koopa. They never call him Bowser, it's just Koopa. But his his cousins, um, Iggy and Spike, which I think are the names of his children in the games, but it's um it's the valet from Ferris Bueller again. He comes back from Strange Days to be in this movie. Oh really? Yeah. And then uh um Fisher Stevens from Hackers is the other one. And they're kinda like the comic relief. Um but they do a pretty good job, you know. Yeah, being being kind of They're incompetent, okay. and then they make them smart, and they kind of get annoying. They they They're do that they annoying. they do that cartoon thing where they make them smart, and they all, they start going like, "Indubitably, just, my good yeah. sir." <laughs> yeah. And like the casting is great. Even like okay, so Mario is obviously Bob Hoskins, and that just looks like Mario. And then Luigi is played by uh, Puerto Rican Italian um, John Leguizamo, and he also does a good job. I mean, he doesn't really look like Luigi, but you kind of needed some kind of sex appeal if you're gonna cast bob hoskins as mario if you're gonna make this the sexiest movie ever for some reason <laughs> and then not only that but because i was watching it and i was like why didn't they give because daisy is luigi's love interest i was like why didn't they just make it peach and give it to mario and then i was like oh probably because mario looks like bob hoskins but then they still give mario a super hot ass girlfriend for no real reason <laughs> so he can pull mario can pull in this movie and then here's another note I noticed, okay? And maybe we're not the people, because we're two cis males. Maybe we're not the people to mention this. And I want to preference it by saying all kidnapping is bad. The bomb squad is anti-kidnapping in general. <laughs> but if you're going to get kidnapped, getting kidnapped by dinosaur men and just kind of being locked in a room until they find the princess that they're looking for and then they let you go... <laughs> It's a pretty good. That's like the best well, case scenario for well, they, being kidnapped. They weren't gonna let them go, but they do. Like they do get out. There is the Koopa has like an evil wife who I don't remember her name, but um, I don't remember her name, but she is a good addition. She's like yeah. the only original character from this movie, right? I don't know and if I, she was supposed to be playing anyone. I mean, everyone's just kind of a, a nonsense also, character. My, in this movie. Yeah, my. Uh, <laughs> My, like, knowledge of... Yeah, she plays Lena. I don't think that's a character in the game. I don't, But she's great. She does a great job. I don't know why they've introduced... Like, you're introducing a new world. You're introducing dinosaur men. You're introducing King Koopa. 
and also Luigi Brothers. Do we need another character that's kind of turning against Koopa? We don't, especially if they're just going to kill her. They, they also get into a lot of random scrapes with just people in town. Like the second they get there, a grandma like mugs them with like a taser. And then she is mugged herself, but she gets thrown into like a, a car. It, well, they it's just, kind of, they there's kind so of many characters. Seem, and there's like a bunch of stuff like in this world, like all the cars go on like go crack, go kart tracks, like at a carnival. And I like, I don't know why they did that, but it's, I guess it's to differentiate between Mario, like between the Mario world and the real world. But then like at one point, they they're driving a cop car and they crash into another cop car and they're just kind of rolling on the street and it's like yeah that doesn't work when you're both like connected to a track over your head <laughs> yeah and then another thing is that like they do um they introduce like a bunch of stuff where it's kind of like oh i don't know if you guys <laughs> i don't know if you guys need to introduce this much this many details to this like one of the things I do like is that Mario and Luigi, they're two plumbers from uh, New York. They've they found themselves in this fantastical world where they're seeing dinosaurs. The whole place is covered in fungi. They're chasing this girl that they don't know anything about, but she mentions that she was hatched in an egg, so they're very confused. They've jumped into a rock that was actually a mirage that led them into this di- dimension. And all the cars are on tracks. They don't know what's going on, but they still know... To fuck the cops because they are immediately <laughs> hostile to the police. Anytime the police ask them anything, they don't like them at all. Yeah, they. And I was well, like, oh, I, they are Italian. It, <laughs> it, there, there's like this seed. Okay, so they, they actually do go to prison. I, they're Koop is trying to find the crystal. That's like the whole plot is he's trying to get the crystal, whatever. He's trying to find a meteorite so that he can merge the two worlds. He can reason. merge the Dino world and yeah, our world. Um, and at one point he does for about. 10 seconds and he destroys the twin towers when I was like, Whoa, too soon. Um, but, um, yeah, they, they go to prison and then like Koopa is there very briefly. He pretends to be their lawyer for almost no reason. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, that Koopa guy sucks. He's also, he calls it, he's like, I'm Larry Lazard from Dactyl, Conda, and Soar. And it's just like, you don't need this many, like, like lizard puns in your thing. But um, he's like, oh, I'm evil. And I'm going to, I'm going to shrink your heads and turn you into Goombas with my machine. And you're like, oh, how are they going to get out of this one? Like, are they going to use their plumber abilities or like trick them? They literally just turn around and start beating the shit out of prison guards. And that's just how they escape. Like, there's no plan. They're just like, all right, let's just kick the shit out of some prison guards. And, <laughs> and then, again, keep in mind, they just, they Koopa has threatened them. But they they immediately put him in a machine to devolve him that Koopa has. I don't know why Koopa has that. Um, but they do that. And then they're really like, yeah, fuck him. Let's kill him. <laughs> so they turn the machine on. And he devolves a little bit, enough for him to like start turning into a dinosaur, but not enough for them to just add a little bit to the budget. Yeah, um, <laughs> his, his eye turns like lizard like for a second. And you know, I will say, like even Samantha Mathis, who plays Daisy, also why didn't they do Peach? I until I watched it this time, I thought she was playing Peach, but. I, you know, I thought her it's, name was Daisy Peach or something. I don't. I think at some point it switched from Daisy to Peach in like in the canon. The 90s. Right? I think they, what they well, like, yeah, like now it's like Mario. Mario is with Peach, and then Luigi's with Daisy, who's like a brunette woman. Yeah. So I think this was back when they were still together. Like Daisy and Peach were still one person. Right. But she does a good job. I mean, she plays. <laughs> it's weird because again, she's not like she really has anything to do, but. She kind of does feel like Princess Peach. Like she does a good job. <laughs> yeah. I, I never thought she wasn't Princess Peach. So, I mean, good for you. <laughs> um, and, like, yeah, it's just kind of like the whole movie is just kind of them. Like, they go to the sand world. They go to the underground world. They go to the fire world. That's where they meet Big Bertha and they have to trick her. They meet Toad. Like, everything, they do everything in this movie. They even go to the cold world for some reason. They do. No, it's, yeah, they freeze the pipes. This is actually the part that most felt like it could be in a Mario game where they're, like, bobsledding through the pipes while, like, Goombas are chasing them in a different bobsled. And I was like, 
I could play that in a game, how you cool, know. How cool would it have been if they, if like, uh, they just cut to like they look behind them and it's just a big penguin. <laughs> see, them. see, that was that was after this. So that this predates oh, no. the penguin so being what added. What we're saying is that this movie um, definitely influenced all of Super Mario Nintendo sixty four. <laughs> um, also, Lance Hendrickson plays the king. Oh yeah, for two seconds. Because <laughs> the whole movie he's been devolved into fungi. Which okay, so in this world that that is a terrifying thing, right? Yeah, the world split into two parts. And so we evolved from apes, but everyone in the Bowser world evolved from dinosaurs, so they kind of look like humans, but not really. And then Bowser devolves the king, but for some reason the king turns into fungi. <laughs> Like, what is this last of us what the hell's but, happening but like not only like not just like oh he's a, he's like literally his consciousness is like spreading through the city and he's been like half dead like that for like third like 20 years or whatever it's like that's terrible that's like lovecraftian yeah <laughs> like there's a lot of weirdly terrifying like implications this well, and it's, it's funny because like at one point uh, luigi starts to realize that um the the fungi king is helping them and so he's like oh he's trying to give us stuff and he gives them like the bomb and then he's like oh i think he's trying to help us so then he rips the fungi off of the ground and swings <laughs> with it and it's like if i was a king i'd be like in what world did you think i meant ripping my <laughs> body apart to like fly to this but it, but it works out it's very like it's funny too because daisy's like that's my dad he's in there and then you see him like he turned you know they 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 save the day and he turns back. They never have a scene together. He's never in any other scenes. He's literally just Yeah, he just sits down and then he, that's it. That's he's like, like those it. plumbers did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh well, it's a see, very I, weird movie. Honestly, like this is movie is considered one of the worst movies of all time. And watching it again, it is funny like how like just accurate it is to the Mario games. Like I know like most of the like the chubs who want to see Wolverine in like his blue and yellow costume, regardless of how dumb it looks, would probably not agree. But if you think about it, everything they do is is exactly what's happening in the game. It's like you wanted a live action game, motherfuckers. You got it. I'm glad I'm cursing so much on this child's movie. Um, it's barely a child's movie. Here's it's... the thing. I don't like if this movie had jokes. I would. I would say that this is a lovely like if it was funny. It, it, it has it like ten out of ten. Well, it has like slapstick where like their car is about to crash and the fungus takes it and it's like boy oy 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 oing. So it's like yeah, it's like, like they it's, had a fully adult movie and they added sound effects uh-huh. sometimes. And, and like yeah, I think they just needed more like actual jokes, you know. Yeah. And I think if that had been the case, this movie would have been viewed. I mean. People probably would have no, still it, said, like, no one would have Mario, liked it. But <laughs> yes. I would have liked it. And that's the most important thing, whether I liked the film. <laughs> the set, like, is the, the scene where you're like, oh, this is not going to go the way you want it to is when they first get to the Dino City. A woman has an egg in a stroller because, you know, they all hatch from eggs. And a man tries to steal it and she screams, get away from my baby. And it's like, I'm sorry, none of this lines up to what Mario should be. And also, <laughs> speaking of that, here's the other thing that's funny. Is they, that like, I know I kind of glossed over it and Yoshi is a dinosaur. But Bowser isn't a dinosaur. He's a big turtle-like monster. I guess they were like, listen, we can explain the dinosaurs. We can't explain the big turtle monster. Let's just make him a T-Rex. It's 1993. Jurassic Park, the book, is really popular now. So let's just make him a dinosaur. This they even like, have the jumping. Like, they get the jumping skill. Yeah, they get, like, jumping, but they're, like, hydraulic boots. Kind of. Do, to be fair, I did mention they weren't in their outfits. They do get their plumber's outfits. And it... It almost has the M and the L. Like that's how common that's how video game accurate there. And again, <laughs> it wouldn't look as weird if they were, I don't know, in a comedy movie, but they're in a dark, strange days style dystopia. So it a hundred percent stands out as like what the hell's happening? Yeah, no, the the whole thing is incongruous. Like yeah. it's I mean, it definitely feels like 
someone had an idea, but then like that idea was being fought every step of the way. Right, right. You know? And like, well, the directors were like, oh, we had this idea that it should be like a uh, max headroom. <laughs> and it's like, why did you have that idea? What, what gave you that idea? Yeah, it's so, like, it, you know, the kind of the city, it's almost like, a, you know, like the old Robert Crumb cartoons where it's like, yeah. oh, everything's kind of gross and sexual. Mm-hmm. It's like that live action. So it's like, if you like Mario, you won't like this. But if you like Robert Crumb, you might like it. It definitely feels like uh, like it takes place in the same universe as uh, Felix the Cat. You know? <laughs> it kind of dirty. Like, everything's cartoony, but also kind of sexual and gross, you know? Yeah. Like, like there, there's... It's, it's such a strange movie. Um, yeah. And then they just, and it, it, it's also one of those movies where it just kind of ends and then they're just like back and then they have the, like, the, like, come on, Mario brothers, we need to yeah, stop they, this new threat. And then they, they thought they were getting a sequel. They did. They definitely have a stinger at the end. <laughs> Take that Marvel. They, they also, they actually have an after the credit scene too. I don't know if you watched to the very end. Well, I, I didn't watch it this time, but I have seen it in the past. With the two Japanese businessmen. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, you know, another Marvel thing. It's like, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. We're, we're all we're all fun, guys. But yeah, this movie, I don't know. Give it a tr- like. It would be a great double feature it, with the new Mario movie, and just to show you like how companies approach, um, you know, properties back like back then and now, where it's like now back then you could literally just make any movie and just call it Super Mario Brothers, and like this movie doesn't even do that. It goes way too far in trying to make Mario Brothers real. And now, like, if you look at the new one, it's like, oh, no, we have to have Biddy Kong. The Kong yeah. from, like, <laughs> Paper Mario 3 that nobody mm. played. It's like, okay. Right. No, it's it's all. Well, and I think, too, this is, I think, I don't know if this movie was the main reason, but Nintendo is super, like. Oh, it definitely lit- is. Litigious and protective of their property. And I think. This movie was them being like, no, we're never like licensing us out for like cheap deals again because it's like, look at the results, you know? Right. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely hyped for the new Mario movie. I'm, I'm, yeah, I am, I'm excited to watch the I'm new down. one. I'm excited to hopefully it'll I, be good. I haven't um, played Mario since like the N64 days, but it's like, I still have that. I'm like, that's yeah, I think that's a cool thing about. I mean, we, I saw this movie in theaters and there was like a line out the door and it was all kids. <laughs> we were so pumped and it was like we watched this one then you watch Mortal Kombat like it was a golden age of I think I think I saw this this movie like I didn't see it in theaters I saw like it was like I was like eight or nine or something and it was just on tv at like 2 a.m and I was just awake and I watched it and at the time I was like oh this is really confusing but maybe it's because I don't understand movies yet because I'm a little kid and now that I feel like I do kind of understand film, it makes even less sense. <laughs> so, yeah, you're like, oh no, it's still confusing. <laughs> like, I think even as a kid, I probably appreciated this more. Um, they do play "Walk the Dinosaur" though, which is kind of the perfect song for this movie. Yeah. So, and there's you know. like fun parts of "Walk the Dinosaur." Like every scene is kind of fun, but like it's like you know, it it gets points for everything, but it's just such a slog with how like not funny it is. And I know that like, Oh, we shouldn't judge it on a comedy, but I feel like if your movie's called super Mario brothers and it's about, <laughs> you know, two plumbers fighting a T-Rex who's evolved into a man, you know, we're going to throw some jokes yeah, in there. Let's it's it's weird. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's not really a kid's movie. It's not really a yeah. kid's movie. It's not really a comedy. It's kind of a satire of a genre that didn't exist yet. But it shouldn't be. And it's also like, it's not really, it, like the themes are kid themes. Like the themes are like stick to your family and like y- yeah, the ones you love. And so it's like, oh, well, it can't really be like, oh, this is actually for adults. It's not even that. because, And that's one of the reasons that it's bad is it kind of like, if there had been a more like pro-union theme, I don't know. I don't know why they would do it. Yeah, they almost know, like... Have this shit. They have, like, a weird where, like, when the two guys become smart, they start wanting to, like, overthrow Koopa and calling themselves the proletariat. It's like, that could be a movie, but it really shouldn't be the Mario movie. Like, it's like, this is not, I don't know. It's it's a mess. I don't know if we've convinced you to watch this, but do me a favor. Go find it on YouTube or on Internet Archive and watch the first two minutes. 
Because if you've ever been like, hey, I really want the most Italian guys ever to voice dinosaurs. <laughs> well, you're <laughs> in luck because for some reason that happened. And they're like, hey, you saw me a dinosaur. We're in New Jersey. And it's like, okay. It, and it has nothing to do with the plot. They just wanted a cartoon at the beginning. It's just a nice little, like, here's what happened to the dinosaurs before the meteor. And it's like, in my mind, it was a cartoon. But it's not even really a cartoon. It's like the Apple Mac 90s it's like Flash graphics. Animation. Yeah, it's, it's so strange. The whole movie. Where they're like... Where they're not moving, but their mouths are just moving up and down, so you can like, t- like, so you can pretend they're moving. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's the best thing. It's ever. great. Yeah, yeah, that's funny you mentioned that because you're like, oh, go see this, and it's like, I don't think legally you can see this, but you can find it on like the archive, like internetarchive.org, if you. Yeah, and I'm just sure you can find every scene of this movie on YouTube because but you cannot buy it. Nintendo does not want this movie being purchased. Well, you can't even here. rent it, you know? I'm, I'm still going to stick up for my homeboy, John Leguizamo. He's going to be in a movie with me eventually. I mean, Not he was in The me. Menu, one of my favorite movies last year. He's, he's been killing menu. it. He's still doing great. He's in Empire. Go watch Empire. It's not that good, but he does a good job in it. It's, fun, it's funny. Happen. He's in... Um, I, know, I didn't make this connection to what we were talking about. It's like, oh yeah, he's also like the freedom fighter against Dennis Hopper in... Um, Land yeah. of the Dead, he I really think it is. He like Dennis Hopper, yeah. <laughs> Dennis Hopper really likes not It's so his funny, <laughs> like, again, like, to see someone... Dennis Hopper, like, literally started off as the epitome of a bum, like a hippie. And then later in life, he only played rich businessmen. It's so funny, like, <laughs> his, uh, his trajectory. But yeah. So yeah, Super Mario Brothers, very interesting. I think it's worth a watch. You and you can turn it off at any point. It's not you're not gonna miss anything. Um, but yeah, yeah, check it out. Go watch it. Tell us how much you love it. Just um, yeah, you don't even have to start with it. Just watch thirty minutes of it. You're like, okay, I, I know what this is. It's, mm, it's insane. It, it is funny <laughs> to watch it and be like, what part of the game is this? And then like realizing what part of the game they're doing. It's very <laughs> fun. That's like that was like the funnest thing about yesterday. It's like because you're watching and you're like. I think in their fucking fire suits in this club. Like, why? <laughs> yeah, is this the Koopahari Desert from the game? Like, why? Yeah. And keep in mind, they put them in those fire suits before they put them in their plumber suits, despite the fact <laughs> that they're plumbers. And then they also, like, we didn't even mention this. I'll bring it up very briefly. But for some reason, Koopa has outlawed all plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes sense if you understand the game, but it doesn't make sense in the world of the movie because Koopa doesn't know that the plumbers are coming and they're going to stop him. Yeah, and they just... don't really stop him with plumbing powers. I just, no. yeah, it's... There is multiple times where they're like, hey, give me that, uh, give they, me a they, plumbing tool. It's almost this weird thing because they're trying to merge the dino planet with Earth and everyone, like not just Koopa, the entire world knows that like that they're in an alternate dimension but they don't ever explain why. It's like everyone read the script before the movie started. Like all the characters just know all that. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. You yeah. know. So, so yeah. Um, so also, guys, we're going to be taking a quick break after Mario Brothers. Uh, you'll find out why some huge news coming when we come back from the, from the break. Uh, it'll probably be around May. It might even be a few weeks into April. I don't know. Um, we're still waiting to hear the news. But when you come back here, you're going to find some big news and something a little bit different at the beginning. So come back to the Bomb Squad. Hopefully William will be here. He probably won't be. Um, not for a while. But we'll have some special guests. We'll have some special Mario Lane egg babies. And we'll have some mushrooms that are came from our dad. So we'll see you guys next time what? on... The Bomb Squad. Oh, should I? Uh, thanks for watching the Bomb Squad. Please, while you're here, give us a like and a subscribe. We really appreciate it, and it means a lot.